When have I ever shown myself to be intolerant of species indifferences? Yes. Our army is human. I am human. And most of my advisors and military officers are human. But that is merely the result of circumstance. Palpatine the Empire's new order emphasized human and, to a lesser extent, humanoid supremacy, with other alien species were designated as, non-humans. The Empire practiced the policy of, human high culture, based on humanocentric beliefs of humans being inherently superior to other species. Many non-human species like Wookiees, Morn Calamari, Tals, and Lurians were subjected to slavery. The rights of sentience, one of the most well-known anti-specious clauses of the Galactic Constitution, as well as other important anti-slavery laws that were ratified during the reign of the Galactic Republic, were removed from the Imperial Charter and legislation legalizing the persecution of alien species was passed. The Empire essentially legalized slavery in Imperial Decree ASL 4557.607.232. The Empire was known to commit atrocities and genocidal campaigns against non-human species, such as the Karmas incident to wipe out the peaceful Karmazi, and commissioning Imperial extermination ships to eradicate entire species through the Outer Rim territories. One of the members of the Imperial Inner Circle known as Janus Grijatus established the Imperial Department of Redesign to suppress and exterminate non-human species. On Imperial Center, all non-humans were forced to move into an ethnic neighborhood, designated as the Alien Protection Zone, keeping them under poor living conditions. As a result, the vast majority of the government officials were composed of humans, with only rare exceptions like Grand Admiral Thrawn climbing in the ranks of the military. However, the cases of Ampotam Tsar, Staffav Razed and Bentalai Sanskar indicate that the Empire tolerated non-humans if they were willing to pledge loyalty to the Emperor. Similarly, some alien species managed to be law-abiding workers, such as the Ugnaughts. The Imperial propaganda machine issued fabricated humanocentric documents to highlight and exaggerate human involvement in galactic history and culture, ignoring countless accomplishments and contributions of numerous non-human species in the founding of galactic civilization and the Republic. Under the New Order, Pro-human propagandists argued that the most advanced and wealthiest member planets of the Galactic Republic in the Core Worlds and other regions of the galaxy were universally ruled and inhabited by humans. Notably, the pro-imperial sentientologist Obo Rin was sponsored by Darth Vader and Lieutenant Pandor to write the Catalogue of Intelligent Life in the Galaxy, a falsified piece of work stating that the Morn Calamari and Colony, long-standing members of the Old Republic, had recently been discovered by the Empire. On the other hand, the IERA professor Tem Ellis was forced to go into hiding from COMPNOR agents for his pro-alien book The University of Sanbra Guide to Intelligent Life. The Empire's humanocentric policies spurred anti-human bigotry and led into the foundation of the anti-imperial alien combine on Imperial Center in Three Abbey, although the organization was ultimately wiped out by the Imperial Security Forces. Ironically, the successor organization of the Combine, the terrorist group Diversity Alliance, attempted to commit anti-human genocide in the years following the Bastion Accords by using a human-killing pathogen developed by the Empire. A high degree of male chauvinism was also seen in the Empire's government and military. Combining the rampant misogyny with the alien persecution, the Empire was often referred to as having non-human policies. Notable exceptions to acknowledged male chauvinism included Director Asan Izzard of the Imperial Intelligence, Major General Tesla Corvi of the Imperial Army and several Navy officers like Admiral Natasi Dala, Admiral Battle Oxtro, Captain Juno Eclipse, and Captain Plick. The sexist policies that plagued the Empire encouraged Major General Corvi to establish the Firebird Society to prove that females were effective and capable soldiers for the Imperial military. Under the new order, the droids often met harsh treatment, because they were not considered to be full citizens by the imperial law. Many imperial institutions preferred the Wookiees and other enslaved sapient beings for complicated and challenging construction projects such as the first Death Star, even though the droids were economically cheaper laborers and provided more effective and sophisticated performance capacity than organic slaves. Curiously, an IG series assassin droid called 4-8C ascended to the rank of Grand Moff and was involved with the activities of the Imperial Department of Redesign. The cyborgs were shunned and detested by the Imperial citizens, and even Grand Admiral Oswald Teshik was ostracized for his extensive cybernetic prosthetics.
The most notable exception in the prevalent anti-cyborg sentiment was the second most powerful man of the Empire, Supreme Commander Darth Vader, whose cybernetic life support system sustained his grievous injuries and struck terror in the hearts of the enemies of the Empire. While the Empire was unquestionably xenophobic, there is little to suggest that the Emperor himself was. The Sith Order was in no way xenophobic, with much of its foundations in the humanoid race of Sith, and many of the greatest Sith Lords were either alien or half-breed, with Sidious' own Sith Master, Darth Plagueis, being a Moon, and his first Sith Apprentice, Darth Maul, being a Dathomirian Zabrak. In fact, it is believed that the privy councillors and advisers that filled Palpatine's court and ran the Empire on a day-to-day -day basis were the xenophobes, and applied human high culture on their own accord. In addition, Palpatine denied the accusations of his being intolerant of species indifferences, citing that the Empire's human population being the majority as simply being the result of circumstance. He also denied being xenophobic in his entry to the Book of Sith. Numerous high-ranking Imperial bureaucrats and military personnel such as Lord Cruer Vandran, Grand Moff Wilhuff Tarkin, Grand Admiral Ishan Il Raz, Grand Admiral Danita Pitta, and many others were known for their humanocentric attitude. The most prominent Imperial xenophobe was Grand Vizier Sait Pestage who considered all non-humans to be nothing more than worthless, animal waste. It seems likely, given the presence of Prince Zizza of the Black Sun, Grand Admiral Thrawn, and other notable aliens in the Imperial Court that Palpatine simply used xenophobia to cull loyalty from his fellow humans, while using everyone else, regardless of species, in general. Indeed, many of the Emperor's loyal dark side adepts, like Hethra, Jache Yasso and Gwelab Apluf, were not human. Likewise, Leia when recounting the liberation of Coruscant and the rebel partisans lynching of various staff within the Imperial Palace implied that at least some of the minor servants working in the palace at the time were alien species themselves. In addition, while the Imperial Handbook, a commander's guide did explicitly view aliens as being primitive, it also made clear that they should not ignore them as a safeguard against being forced to put down unexpected alien uprisings, and also implied that they would need obedient alien populations for the Imperial Engineering Corps as laborers.